This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Monday, the 30th day of March in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here is what we're tracking tonight. The Ministry of Public Health today revealed that of the seven persons hospitalized and in isolation after testing positive for the coronavirus, two are in the coronavirus intensive care unit. Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Karen Ball did not want to provide details of those in the ICU, but said a patient who is up and about would not be in the ICU. The Health Minister Valda Lawrence said because of patient privacy rules, the Health Ministry would not be revealing the identity of any of the patients and would also not reveal details about those in the ICU. Guyana has recorded a total of eight cases, including the first case of the woman who died. During her update this afternoon, Public Health Minister Valda Lawrence revealed that the positive cases are from three different regions in Guyana. In region number three, one. Region number four, six. And region number six, one. These numbers are disaggregated as follows. One child, seven adults under 60 years of age, and one adult over 60 years of age. Of the total confirmed cases, the number of imported cases is four, and local transmission, five. It was also explained that contact tracing is still being done to determine how the new cases were infected. Minister Lawrence said it appears as though many persons are still not taking the virus seriously and she hopes they will start to take it seriously. As it pertains to regional capacity, we have used the PAHO model to determine the number of projected cases for Guyana, which stands at 1,400. Of that number, we will be preparing for 100 persons requiring ICU, 300 isolation beds across the country, and capacity for 730 beds for institutional quarantine. It was revealed today also that 46 persons in Guyana have so far been tested for the coronavirus as of yesterday, with 37 of those cases returning a negative result and one test being inconclusive. The Ministry of Public Health has been stepping up its capacity to deal with the coronavirus and more quarantine facilities are being set up across the country. In an effort to contain and mitigate the further spread of this virus, the Ministry will be strengthening community and hospital surveillance as well as the rapid response surveillance team. As of yesterday, calls to the COVID hotline moved from 856 calls to 998. The information that we give to the public is the truth. It can pass all scrutiny. Because I don't think that many of our people have gotten it. You see us here, we look fresh and so, but we have been burning the oil midnight, morning, whatever. Because we understand the seriousness of Mr. COVID-19. He is a respecter of no one. Guyana recorded its first case of the coronavirus on the 12th of March when tests were carried out on the remains of a woman who died in the accident and emergency unit of the Georgetown Hospital. Four members of her family also tested positive and this past weekend it was revealed that three other persons not linked to the family had also tested positive. Citizens are being encouraged to stay away from large gatherings and to follow the health guidelines being put out by the Ministry of Public Health. More news coming up in a moment. GBTI is your Guyanese bank, a bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. 
Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families. Because we see Guyana through your eyes. Guyot Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyot's Super 95 gasoline. Fuel it up and drive! Tired of long lines? Register with MyGTT at mygtt.co.gy. That's mygtt.co.gy to view and pay your bills from anywhere. Enter to win an Amazon gift card worth 25 US dollars or a bounty voucher worth 5,000 Guyana dollars when you sign up today. GTT, do more. The following is an important message from the Ministry of Public Health. When should you use a face mask? A medical mask is not required for members of the public who do not have respiratory illness symptoms. Wear a mask if you are coughing or sneezing constantly. For healthy people, wear a mask only if you are caring for a person suspected to have COVID-19. Masks are only effective when used in combination with frequent hand cleaning with alcohol-based hand rubs, sanitizers or washing with soap and water. If you wear a mask, dispose of it properly. The Ministry of Public Health has a hotline to provide information on the coronavirus. Members of the public can call 227-4986 or 624-3067. Welcome back. The full court consisting of Chief Justice Roxanne George and Justice Narish Harnanan has put on hold the ongoing voter recount matter that is before Justice Franklin Holder. The pause is coming as the full court considers a request by the People's Progressive Party to grant a stay to allow for an appeal to move forward about the matter of jurisdiction of the court to hear the matter. Last week, Justice Franklin Holder ruled that the court has jurisdiction to hear the recount matter, setting this afternoon for the commencement of the hearing. The decision by the full court this midday has delayed that matter before Justice Holder. The full court is set to hand down its decision tomorrow on whether it will stay the proceedings before Justice Holder completely. Attorney for the PPP Anil Nandlal explained that they will all now have to wait and see whether the full court accepts their appeal. We will wait and see whether the uh, full court um, accepts our appeal and um, takes the matter away from Holder because that is what the essence of the appeal is. that. Justice Holder cannot hear and determine the matter because Justice Holder and indeed the High Court has no jurisdiction to enter into um, an inquiry into the courts, uh, into the GCOM's decision. Mr. Nadlal said he is still of the opinion that Justice Holder and the High Court should not be hearing the voter recount matter. Section 141 of the Representation of the People's Act, a section that has never been um, considered before by the judiciary in Guyana, based upon my research, prohibits the High Court from inquiring into any decisions or omissions or acts of GCOM other than by way of an elections petition. What that means is that other than after the declaration of the results, because the election petition comes only after the declaration of the results. My reasoning is that that provision was specifically put there because Parliament wants GCOM to complete the electoral process and that is why Parliament has conferred upon GCOM a panoply of powers. President David Granger initiated a recount of all the votes through a CARICOM agreement with the opposition leader. But the recount never got on the way as it was challenged by Yulita Moore, who was a candidate for the APNU AFC. She is contending that a recount of the votes on the any agreement by the president and the opposition leader would be unlawful. The move to the court by Ms. Moore has effectively blocked the recount and any other move by the Elections Commission. The commission has said it will be guided by the decisions of the court. The chairman of the Elections Commission Mission Justice Claudette Singh in a sworn affidavit has said a recount could be done. 
Well, amid calls by some citizens for a curfew and lockdown of the city of Georgetown to assist in the fight against the coronavirus, City Mayor Ubrach Narayan said such a move cannot take place at this time. The mayor told reporters this afternoon that the city cannot be operated as if it's a light switch. The city is not a light bulb where you can flick a switch and lock it down like that. We will not lock down the city. We will work closely with the Ministry of Public Health and other um, stakeholders, including the Private Sector Commission, the GCCI, the banks, and all other organizations. Mayor Narine said he has received calls from many citizens asking for there to be a lockdown, but he wants them to understand that a lockdown of the capital city could have an impact that other towns would not experience. The private citizen had called me, um, a lot of private citizens have called me to what is the system because people have concerned that they're hearing that the city is going to lock down and that is the reason why I decided to call this press conference so that people out there will be aware what is our position? Because some, some of the private citizens in the markets and so on did make contact with me saying that they, they need to know because they have um, vegetables and so on that they will need to get rid of before we take a decision and when we're going to lock down. The mayor also said a lockdown of Georgetown is not possible, but citizens and those coming into the city need to follow the guidelines by the Ministry of Public Health. To make sure we maintain and call upon residents and our people out there to continue to limit gathering and maintain social distance. And I must say that some of our people are not taking COVID-19 very seriously. We are operating as normal, we should take precaution because of our family members who we live with can able to be affected if we come out on the road and mix and min mingle. The Georgetown City Council has started the sanitization of several areas in the city, completing the border and fabric markets. The sanitization exercise is being taken to the other markets in the city and several communities. A lockdown of Georgetown would ban transportation and most services and only allow for the operation of essential services. Many Caribbean countries have found it difficult to institute a full lockdown. With eight positive cases in Guyana, at least three other towns while not instituting a lockdown have started a nightly curfew. Well, as Guyana prepares for a projected increase in the number of COVID-19 cases, the Pan American Health Organization country representative Dr. William Aducro has reaffirmed that there is no treatment for the coronavirus, although there are some tests that are on the way. WHO has started what we call the solidarity trial and it's, um, these are treatments that have been trialed in 45 countries. Dr. Adokro said today there is no evidence of any drug treatment that has gone through the trials and has been approved by the World Health Organization. A vaccine may not even be realized for another year. He advised that persons continue to take the precautions set out by the World Health Organization to help stop the spread of the virus. To date, and I want to, I want to state to date, there's no evidence of any drug treatment that has gone through the trials and has been approved by WHO. And Guyana's Director of Disease Control, Dr. Nadia Liu, explained that Guyana is following the guidelines of the Pan American Health Organization and the WHO to be able to administer tests to persons who may have come into contact with the virus. A suspect case has three parameters, and this is where we would use the suspect case as reasons for testing. So the first parameter is that a patient will have acute respiratory infection with a travel history to one of the countries that has declared infection with COVID-19 or there is the declaration of community transmission during 14 days prior to the onset of signs and symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath. The second scenario 
is a patient with acute respiratory infection plus contact with a confirmed or a probable case in the last 14 days prior to the onset of sign and symptoms. The third and the last case scenario is a patient with severe acute respiratory illness that requires hospitalization in the absence of an alternative diagnosis which explains the current signs and symptoms the patient is experiencing. Dr. Liu alluded to the fact that not all persons who desire to be tested can be tested if they have not met the criteria. She said the test can only be for persons who have met that criteria. Others should call the COVID-19 hotline and be guided. The National Public Reference Laboratory remains the only facility in Guyana that can test for the coronavirus. Hours after the murder case against businessman Marcus Bizram was dismissed by a magistrate who upheld a no-case submission, he was re-arrested this afternoon as the director of public prosecutions became involved in the matter. The DPP ordered Bizram's arrest and also ordered that the magistrate reopens the preliminary inquiry. The decision by the DPP came after she requested the court documents from the magistrate. In a statement, the DPP said that having been satisfied that there was sufficient evidence contained for him to stand the high court trial, the magistrate was directed to reopen the preliminary inquiry. News source understands that Bizram was arrested while celebrating his short-lived freedom with friends and family. When he was free this morning, he had a lot to say outside the courthouse. As we have said from inception, anytime, anywhere, any magistrate, yes. we have nothing to hide because this wasn't a case of merit, it wasn't a case of law. This was a case with political direction and a religious prosecution from the DPP because the, the, the deceased is Muslim. This case is entirely fabricated by the state and the DPP. It was hours after that statement outside the courthouse that he was re-arrested. Earlier, Magistrate Renita Singh had accepted the no-case submission by Bizram's attorneys. Bizram's attorneys had argued that there was no evidence tying him to the murder of Carpenter Fayez Narindat. The Carpenter was beaten to death in October 2016 and a number of other persons were charged with the murder, but Bizram was thought to be the mastermind of the killing. He was extradited from the U.S. last year to face the charge in the local courts. That extradition came after a long battle in the U.S. scores by him to block the extradition. Once in Guyana, Bizram was charged but his case crawled along as there were several issues regarding the prosecution's readiness. Then there was an issue with the magistrate who was initially hearing the matter, forcing his removal from the case. With the DPP's decision today, Bizram will have to remain in custody until the completion of the case. This past weekend, police investigators found themselves probing the death of Prashad Nagar resident Riaz Holodar, who reportedly shot himself to the head early on Saturday morning during a row with his wife. Holodar was the man who filed the court action, blocking the Region 4 and National Declaration of Results from the 2nd of March elections. He was also the driver of attorney Anil Nandlal, who took the case to the court. Although Holodar lived in Prashad Nagar, his address was listed as South Road, where Nandlal has his law office. The alleged suicide was witnessed by Holodar wife and a security guard at the apartment building where he lived. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Neighbors said the man was heard arguing loudly just after 4 o'clock on Saturday morning. According to the neighbors, the security guard at the building was heard attempting to calm the man down, but the argument continued. Moments later, screams were heard before a gunshot echoed through the area. At the court today, attorney Anil Nandlal said the man's death is in no way connected to the case before the court. It does not, as, as, as you would have seen, the case is proceeding. Now, at some point in time you will have to make an application to substitute someone in his stead. But as a general rule, litigation is never defeated by the death of a party. Uh, there is provision in the law for the case to continue and for someone to be substituted. And that happens on an everyday basis. In litigation, people die during the course of cases. That's a normal thing. The matter is still under investigation. The Guyana Oil Company is reporting that there is no shortage of fuel on the local market and that it has sufficient fuel in its storage. Guy Oil said its fuel distribution across the country has been continuing uninterrupted. And the company also noted in a release that while international borders have been closed because of the coronavirus, fuel tankers are being allowed access to the fuel supplying and other countries like Guyana. The company said there is no challenges at the ports of loading or at the terminals in Guyana and therefore the company is not affected. Last Last week, Guy Oil announced a reduction in the cost for fuel at the pump. More news coming up in a moment.
Wondering how you can access free learning materials for your children? Parents and guardians, please visit the Ministry of Education's website at www.education.gov.gy to access textbooks, past papers, and practice tests to keep your child engaged in continuous learning. When you have accessed the site, go to the Students tab, wait for a second, and choose the appropriate option. You now have access to the resources you need. You are encouraged to take advantage of this opportunity as we strive to provide the best education for the nation's children. A message from the Ministry of Education. They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italian, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. Being. Be smart by brand new ST Hobo Trucks today. Call 608 4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated, Block B, Public Road Covenant, East Bank, Demerara. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all do right, walk in upright ways knowing that's what being a man is all about and ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing stand strong be the one to live right falls a trademark of china zhanghao incorporated located at land of canaan east bank demerara was incorporated in April of 2013, with over 10 billion Ghana dollars invested in a state-of-the-art 100,000 barrel fuel storage facility, a modern service station, an office complex, and a modern wharf that can berth international vessels. Having no association with any other fuel company, Falls imports its own fuel, which meets quality specifications, has all the legal permits, and is in compliance with international requirements. Its bulk facility can load eight trucks simultaneously at a rate of 1,000 liters per minute, while the service station can service 12 cars at a time using computerized fuel pumps which can facilitate the use of ATM cards. Through its professional team of mostly Guyanese, Falls holds sales and retails fuels to the public, including farmers and miners, and will continue to positively contribute to Guyana by providing quality products, service, and attractive prices. Try Falls today for all your fuel needs. The following is an important message from the Ministry of Public Health. Getting your workplace ready for COVID-19. Surfaces such as desks, tables, and telephones with keyboards must be wiped with disinfectant regularly, or at least every few hours. Use containers of hand sanitizers and place them in prominent places around the workplace. Provide access to places where staff can wash their hands with soap and water and promote regular hand washing at the workplace. The Ministry of Public Health has a hotline to provide information on the coronavirus. Members of the public can call 227-4986 or 624-3067. Across the region right now, we begin in Antigua, where a pastor and a member of the New Testament church there were remanded to prison. According to reports, Pastor Uriah Taylor pleaded guilty to failure to comply with the public health regulations, banning gatherings in excess of 25 people. Church member Alston Turner reportedly pleaded guilty to obstruction, resisting arrest, and battery on police. The charges stemmed from an incident at the church on Sunday when officers disrupted the morning service over violations to the country's social distancing policy in the fight against the coronavirus. The defendants will be sentenced tomorrow. Over in Colombia, the left-wing National Liberation Army rebel group has declared a unilateral ceasefire for one month, starting on the 1st of April. The rebels said the ceasefire was a humanitarian gesture amid the coronavirus pandemic. More than 700 people have tested positive for the coronavirus in Colombia and 10 have died. The rebel group said it was also open to reviving suspended peace negotiations with the government. 
And finally tonight, international news. Some good news for Spain. The growth in the country's coronavirus cases appear to be slowing. Another 6,400 cases were confirmed today, the lowest increase in new cases for a week. The total number of deaths reached 7,340 in Spain after 812 new fatalities. It comes as a national lockdown expanded to instruct non-essential workers to stay home for two weeks. Globally, 36,211 persons have died from the coronavirus, with 755,591 testing positive. Meanwhile, the doctor leading Spain's response to the outbreak has tested positive. Spain's latest national figures show that the virus upwards curve appears to be flattening out. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting.